Okay, we've come to our final language model regularization approach. And this one is a combination of a whole bunch of the other ideas with a new idea. Okay? And a Knesset nice smoothing, I should say, is actually used quite a lot in practice. If you load up an Ngram language modeling toolkit, it's quite a strong chance that Knesset nice is like the default smoothing approach that, that's being used. So it introduces one new idea, and it's relatively simple, but you need to just be awake a little bit to understand this idea. In the Europarl corpus, this corpus of uh, European Parliament, the word York occurs 477 times. That's actually quite a lot. Given that most words only occur once or twice, it's actually quite a lot. It's as common as foods and the word indicates and providers. Okay? And this means that if you look at the unigram probability for the word York, just York on its own, this is actually quite high. But the interesting thing is that the word York is almost always in a context where it follows the word new. Okay? And that makes sense. The word New York occurs a lot. Okay? Um, and this specific case where you have a word like York that always follows in a very predictable way another word, this really screws things up when you're interpolating or backing off. Okay? Because it might assign unrealistically high probability to this um, word. Let's say we're interpolating, okay? And let's say we're trying to get the probability of the word York given uh, some stuff that happened there, okay? That stuff is not, does not include the word new. And now what we're doing is we're using interpolation. So we've got our unigram model here. Um, York plus, uh, mm, let's just do a bigram case. So P of bigram given York and some other stuff. This should actually get a low probability because this doesn't contain the word new. And we know that York, York is very probable, but it's only probable when it actually follows new. Okay? So we want this to be low. That should be low if we, are, if we have a good language model. But now what happens is, because we're using interpolation, this is low, this didn't occur, so that can fall away. But this thing here, that's actually quite high, because York on its own occurs a lot. Okay, and this messes things up. Does that make sense? What uh, Knesset Nye smoothing does is it actually takes the unique histories with which a word occur into account. Basically it says, does this word occur with many different distinct types of preceding words? Or does it always occur with just one or two of, of, this, um, of the words that comes before it? So what you do is, we're going to count the number of bigram types ending in the specific word that we're looking at. And this is just an example for the bigram case, but you can extend it to higher order n-grams as well. So what we're going to do is, we're going to count the number of bigram types, it's important, ending in wt. In other words, we count what are the distinct um, double word combinations ending in the word York. So this is the, just the formal mathematical notation. This is the set of words um, with the preceding word and the current word, which is York, where the counts are more than zero, and this is the size of that set. Okay? But in plain vanilla English, this would be the number of distinct types of words that comes before York. We know that York occurs at least with one type. Tell me that type. New. New. Thank you. New is one type. Um, maybe it also occurs with, I don't know, a few other types, but not many. Okay? We know it occurs like 477 times. 473 of those 477 times, the word new is the one that precedes it. But maybe there are some other examples. Maybe the word of like the Duke of York or something like that. Okay. So let's say there are just two types of words that precede the word York. Okay. New and of. Okay, cool. Now, uh, in normal maximum likelihood land, in, in plain old uh, normal maximum likelihood, what we would do is to get the unigram probability of the word York. We would count up how often does York occur, and then we would divide that by the total number of words in our corpus. Okay, and we now know that this actually screws up the probability for the word York 
So instead of doing that, what Nessa Nye does is it counts up out of um, all the possible biogram types, um, how many unique types end up in York. And it takes that fraction as the unigram probability for the word York. So let me just write that, um, that here. P Knesset Nye for the word York is equal to the number of bigram types ending in York divided by the total number of bigram types in my data set. And now this fixes things, okay? Because the number of bigram types ending in York, we said that that's roughly two, and the number of bigram types in our data set, that's quite large. And that means that you're actually taking the unique context in, in which the specific word occurs, you're taking that into account when you're getting the unigram counts. Let's just do another word. So let's just do the Kness and I uh, unigram uh, probability for the word the. Then you would say, what is the number of bigram types ending in the divided by the number of unique bigram types? What do you guys think this, the numerator here is? Is it small? Is it large? The word the, do you think it occurs just in very unique contexts? No, there's probably a whole ton of different words that precedes the word the. The is quite a common word, so we want this to be high. And this method will actually still do that because the occurs in so many different um, preceding, with, with so many different preceding words, you will actually still end up with a relatively large number here. And then when you're normalizing it, you end up with a relatively large unigram probability. Now, again, we're screwing up probabilities because we're, we're messing around with, with some probabilities. And you now know that when you're doing that, you need to be very careful so that things still sum to one. So to do this, you need to get some mass probability mass from somewhere. And so what happens in Knesset Nice doing is you use absolute discounting on higher order um, n grams in order to get some weight that you can then distribute down to your unigram probabilities. Okay. And so Knesset and I, um, you basically have this combination of the central idea of looking at unique context, but you also incorporate that with absolute discounting in order to give you some weights. Again, to get the lambdas in this specific case is actually quite tricky, right? To make sure that things sum to one, you can look at Jarofsky and Martin um, third edition, which actually do explain how you get um, these, these lambdas.